this morning, the undisputed heavyweight champion of national parks. No other park comes close to how big Wrangell St. Elias is. If you're unfamiliar with it, that's likely because it's not exactly easy to reach. Sitting on the edge of Alaska, an eight-hour drive from Anchorage, 13.2 million pristine acres with an active volcano, nine of the 16 highest peaks in America, and countless glaciers. Wrangell St. Elias also contains the last community inside a national park. About 100 full-time residents who were convinced the best way to live is far away from everyone else. It may not be as famous as other attractions, but Wrangell St. Elias National Park is larger than Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Switzerland combined. There's no other way to get an idea for the scale, the scope of this place than being up here. Yeah, this park, as massive as it is, would be completely underappreciated without aviation. Austin Robel of Wrangell Mountain Air gave us the big picture from above. If you guys look in the ice, sometimes you can see layers that uh, function basically the same as tree rings. And you can count those like tree rings and see how many years worth of ice you're looking at. For millions of years, Wrangell St. Elias has been shaped by the competing forces of volcanism and glaciation. I mean, how many places can you go and see both volcanic <laughs> and <laughs> glacial activity I know, I know. at Isn't the same incredible? time, fire and ice? Yeah. A hundred years ago, the section of the park we flew over was mined heavily, but no more. The Alaska Lands Conservation Act of 1980 protected 157 million acres in our 49th states, including Wrangell St. Elias. Right in the middle of that, a throwback to the days of the Kennecott mining operation is still thriving. We're in the park. Yeah, we're in the geographic center of the park. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's as central as you can be in the park. McCarthy is a one of a kind private town accessible only by plane, a privately owned bridge or a footpath. This was once Sin City. <laughs> yeah, like the quintessential Sin City. I mean. It was moonshining, gambling, prostitution. Today, it's a little different. Neil Derish is the town's largest landowner, one of the business people serving a small year-round population of locals and a growing number of seasonal tourists. When people go out into the wilderness and then they come here and they're able to relax or they're able to have a cold beer or whatever, that's part of the human condition today. They want to experience the unpredictable. They want to be surprised by an animal. They don't want to get eaten by a bear. So finding the way to help people enjoy their adventure, that's really our role. In this area, adventure is not hard to come by. It's wild walking through here. <laughs> it's, it's quite a spot, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, time forgotten. Mike Loso, a geologist with the National Park Service, showed us the restored buildings that once served as the heart of mining town. You know what they ought to have here is a, a chase scene. Not to mention the site of this elaborate video from John Denver's 1978 film, Alaska, The American Child. The John Denver fan, not many people admit I that love, they are. I love John Denver. Do you? Yeah. Nice. Good. Makes me like you. I'm a John Denver fan, too. Huge John Denver fan. Wrangell St. Elias is one of the only places in the world you can, with reasonable effort, actually walk on a glacier. We go out this trail a lot. Are we going to see bears? Maybe. Wouldn't surprise me. The five-mile hike takes you through some of the most majestic beauty this land has to offer along with interesting encounters on the way. So there, staring at us. I mean, he could come down and attack us right now, but I would say he's probably not going to. No, he's running away. Yeah, that's what we like him to do. We like to look at him and then watch him leave. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, really cool. a little black bear. Yeah. Or medium little. sized. Medium sized. Not little. Yeah, no, he wasn't little. Yeah. It's good that you brought the bear spray. Right. 
He, yeah. didn't, he didn't bring the bear spray. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. The glacier we travel to tells a familiar story. When I first came to this valley for the very first time in 1990, Coming down this trail, you'd, you'd get on the ice just below where we're standing right here. And as you can see, <laughs> the ice edge is quite a distance away. We're gonna walk it here in yeah. a moment and you'll feel how far it is. But that's a measure in you know part of a human lifetime of how far this glacier is retreated. The irregular shape of the surface is a product of different areas melting at different rates based on sun exposure, rock debris, covers some parts more than others. The basic idea, and this is a good place to point it out, is a very thin layer of dirt absorbs more sunlight and melts faster. But a thick layer of dirt like this, just a couple centimeters thick, is enough to insulate the ice from the sun, and so it melts slower. While cycles of glaciers growing and receding over hundreds of years are normal, the rate of melting over the last half century is impossible to ignore. How many feet down did it, has it gone? At this particular location, about 200 feet, give or take. And when you go down to the, the terminus of the glacier, just a little ways downstream of us, there's a huge lake there now. We call that a proglacial lake. And that lake didn't even exist when I first came here. It doesn't even have a name, it's so new. And this summer, my son and I are gonna build a sailboat and start sailing on that lake. Really? That's the future. Making the best of a new reality while studying ways to preserve what's left. As our time on the Kennecott Glacier drew to a close, another group of adventurers were heading toward the ice, drawn by the bucket list chance to visit this undisputed heavyweight champion of national parks. You know, part of it is those statistics you were just citing, they even sort of hide the truth of it because 13.2 million acres, well, that's the park boundary, but that boundary in most directions is arbitrary. It's more mountains, more wilderness, more glaciers. North America's mountain kingdom, that's the term I prefer. So you're saying the park is actually bigger than it is, which is already the biggest. <laughs> the protected lands in this area are much bigger than just Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve. It's the core of a much bigger protected landscape. How awesome is that? Super awesome. <laughs> you, I mean, you look out in the park, wherever you are, just in awe and just try to soak it in, but it is so big and it is so beautiful. All the different terrain that you were showing us, and I'm thinking as watching that, most of us are never gonna go there. Thank you for taking yes. us there. But how is it really amazing? How is it we don't know or have never heard of this place being the heavyweight that it is? Well, because it's on the edge of Alaska and because it's, as we said, it's not easy to get to at all. So you have to make that commitment. But more and more people are. And I think it's it's starting to get a little more attention. And I, and Especially walking on a glacier. Yeah. yeah. Right? I think you've like sparked or ignited <laughs> some more interest. Some more interest. Go Wrangell St. Elias.